Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein. Uh, this is the fourth part of a series of lectures about Newton's Principia, um, but it stands on its own as a full summary of all the background information and the general idea of what Newton's going to prove. And the next parts after this have a lot of the uh, geometry details. So let's see where we are so far. First we have Galileo's observation that when objects fall, uh, the amount of distance that they fall there, their displacement, is equal to the acceleration, which he assumes is, is a constant, times uh, the square of the amount of time that's passed. And maybe he, uh, maybe he noticed this by um, seeing that when something falls, and it's also not just going down, but also has some horizontal uh, movement that it seems to make half of a parabola, like that. Well, what he noticed is that, in general, that the uh, displacement is equal to the acceleration multiplied by the square of the amount of time. Now, acceleration is caused by force, so we could read by, 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 by the force, the attractive force of the planet on the object. So we could say that displacement is force times time squared, which can be rewritten as force is equal to, to the displacement over the square of the amount of time. Second observation is a conjecture of Kepler's which Newton proves, and I explain that proof in part two of uh, this lecture series, which is that uh, a planet in equal times will sweep out in an equal area. So here I have a planet in two different times that are sort of equal times apart. And when it's close to the sun, you have this triangle, which has a sort of small sort of, it's, it's like a triangle, it's like a, uh, it's got this curved arc here as its third side, but it has sort of a small height and the triangle is kind of wide. Whereas later on, because it's further away from the sun, it has to slow down in order to maintain that equal area. So Newton proves, uh, he proves Kepler's law that equal uh, planets sweep at equal times in equal areas. I'll write that, I'll say uh, Kepler, we'll just say that time is uh, proportional to the swept out Now, Newton then takes this idea and turns it into a, a geometry problem. Newton ba basically says that if here's a uh, portion of an orbit, and here's where the planet was, it was at P, in some future time it will be at Q. Assuming Q is very, uh, assuming Q is very close to P, a couple of things happen. For one, the um, acceleration or the force will be constant, because although Newton is going to prove that the constant, that the force changes, uh, we're going to use sort of the Galileo assumption that when they're really close together that the force does, does not change. Uh, secondly, when they're real close together, the uh, arc QP becomes equal to line segment QP, and the swept out area is not just two line segments and an arc, but it's actually the area of triangle QSP, which happens to have area uh, one-half SP is the base times uh, times QT. It, it, it's this, it's uh, also, when Q and P are real close together, this line set, this little tiny line segment, RQ, becomes the only movement that really happens, the displacement is this, this distance from where P wants to go to R if it was just following along the tangent, but it doesn't. The sun, S, pulls it, it pulls it from R to Q, so RQ becomes a displacement. Well, we put these all together into one nice statement. Remember from, uh, from Galileo, force is going to be proportional to displacement over time squared. But the, um, so displacement is QR. I'll just put this as proportional. Uh, the time is the area of that triangle. So it's going to be the, the area of the triangle is one-half PS times QR. And since it's proportional, I could ignore the one-half. So I'll say, sorry, QT. So I'll say QT squared times PS squared.
And what Newton's going to do, and I'm going to explain the basics behind this, is he's going to find some relationships with QR and QT when the curve happens to be an ellipse. So Newton is going to answer the question that if the planet is going around and the path is an actual ellipse, where S is, is one of the foci of the ellipse, he's going to show some relationships uh, where when Q and P are really close together, he's going to find a, a, an actual expression for the force, which is going to end up becoming uh, proportional to 1 over PS squared, where P is where the, the planet is right now. And he's going to use some properties of ellipses that uh, go back all the way to Apollonius. Newton's going to add some auxiliary, auxiliary lines to his diagram. So here I have the ellipse from before. I, I have the P from before and the Q uh, and the R. Uh, those are all from the picture from before. C is the center of the uh, ellipse. Uh, PG is just the, it goes from P through C and then intersects again at G. Um, this CA is the major axis of the ellipse and, um, sorry, that's half of it, minor, uh, semi-major axis, and CB is the semi-minor axis. Uh, some of these other line segments, one of them is uh, QX, that's just parallel to, uh, to, to PR. If you continue QX, it will hit PG at point V, and QT we have from before, that's, a, uh, that's just perpendicular. What Newton is going to basically use geometry to prove is a very uh, not obvious theorem, but the theorem is going to be this, that no matter where Q and P are on the ellipse, that this relationship is going to end up being true. L is a constant uh, associated with the ellipse, it's actually called the lattice rectum, and it's the uh, line segment that goes through the focus and is sort of perpendicular to the uh, to that major axis. So that, that's a constant with the ellipse. So L times QR over QT squared equals 1.4 approximately. And it's also true, he proves this, that this will always equal this other relationship, 2 times CP over GV times QV squared over QX squared. As you can see, no matter where I move Q, those two values still uh, remain the same. But well, let me show you what the consequence of this theorem about ellipses is. From before, we have this relationship that force is proportional to QR over QT squared times SP squared. But according to this, um, QR over QT squared is also equal to this. 2CP over GV times QV squared over QX squared. But as Q gets closer to P, what happens is QV and QX become the same line segment. And also, CP is this sort of diagonal line, and GV is from here all the way to here. So 2CP is the entire uh, GP line, but as Q and P get real close together, GV also becomes the entire uh, GP line. So what we're going to be able to do is as P gets really close to, to Q, this thing basically becomes 1 because 2CP becomes GV. And since QX and QV basically become the same line segments as Q gets real close to P, that thing's also 1. So basically what ends up happening is that this entire thing becomes 1, and we just get 1 over SP squared, which is exactly what Newton set out to prove. The thing he set out to prove is that if the planetary orbits are ellipses, then the force that keeps the planet in that orbit would be uh, proportional to the square of the distance from the sun, where the sun's at uh, one of the foci of the ellipse. Well, this theorem over here, that L times QR over QT squared always equals 2CP over GV times QV squared over QX squared, that's going to take another 40 minutes to be continued.